And now it's time for me to talk about Star Wars, and in talking about it, I am not going to spoil the new movie that just came out, The Rise of Skywalker. I did see it on Friday night. Uh, what I do every time a new Star Wars movie comes out is that I get together with a bunch of my friends, and we rent out an entire theater to ourselves, all 160 of us, and we did that on Friday night. It was a great time. Everybody enjoyed the film. Uh, from my little poll within the group there, I think everyone liked this film better than The Last Jedi, so it was well received, and I think people walked away uh, satisfied with what they put together here. And of course, J.J. Abrams did a nice job on the film because he's good at this kind of pop culture stuff. All that said, I think Disney really had a impossible task that they could never really achieve, and they didn't make a lot of good decisions along the way to even try to make this work. Uh, let's first start off, though, with the amount of content that Disney has put together for Star Wars over the last four years. Remember, it was only four years ago that The Force Awakens was released. Since then, they had four additional films, including one year where they had two films, which was a total disaster. And I think part of the problem here is that Disney bought Lucasfilm from George Lucas for north of $4 billion, and they had to make back that investment. And as such, they had to put a lot of content out there to try to get some of that revenue back in to pay for what they purchased. And that's why we got all of these movies. And I think the problem, though, is that the Star Wars feature films have always thrived on their scarcity partly because when they first came out, they were impossible to make. The first film in particular pioneered a host of new special effects that have kind of stuck with the industry to this day. It was so groundbreaking, so different. Audiences were totally blown away by what they put together there because it was just something nobody had ever seen before. And I think the public really appreciated how hard these films were to make because in addition to all the hype around the movie, uh, people were curious as to how they did it, and there was a whole bunch of content on television with behind the scenes and stories written up in newspapers and magazines about the gargantuan effort that went into this film. It was so new and different that no studio really wanted to fund it, and George Lucas pretty much found a way to pay for it himself, and that was a pretty wise decision in the end. Uh, and it just goes to show you that corporations will always play it safe and even back in the 70s, they were playing it safe, which is why nobody really wanted to fund Star Wars. Uh, but George Lucas thought he could make it work. And what's happened since then is that we've gotten movies that uh, appeal to what studios believe they know will work, and they largely have. And unfortunately, what fans want is not profitable compared to what a general movie kind of movie will deliver for the studios. And let's have a look at an example of that. So Rogue One... I would say is a real fan movie. This was something that was set in the original Star Wars universe, the, the regular mainline trilogy. It was set pretty much right before A New Hope, the movie that started it all. Uh, the setting, the scene, the characters, the set pieces, all of it was from that film, and it was just a very comfortable place to be because we all knew it so well, but it was a new story with new characters told within that universe Fans largely enjoyed that film. Uh, they did make some changes before release to put more of Darth Vader into it and everything, and uh, it was just a complete fan favorite. Of course, there's going to be fans that didn't like it, but by and large, fans loved it. It made a billion dollars. Now, if we look at what Disney brought in with The Force Awakens, it was a very different story. That film, which came out the prior year, uh, did double that amount at the box office. Two plus billion dollars worldwide versus about a billion with the fan film. And of course, if you're Disney looking at this, you're going to make more of this versus more of the fan stuff. And I have no doubt that Rogue One was kind of like a test market to see how much they could get from fans if they put together a blockbuster size retro film. And clearly the uh, sequel trilogy here, written the way it was with the characters they had and, and you know, kind of directed the way that they directed them, uh, certainly was more successful financially, even though the fans were not as pleased with The Force Awakens as they were with Rogue One. Now, you might be thinking, well, okay, what about The Last Jedi? Well, The Last Jedi did better than Rogue One as well. $1.3 billion at the box office, and this is actually, I think, pretty good for a sequel of a super huge blockbuster film. I don't think The Empire Strikes Back did as well against the original Star Wars by comparison. Uh, so for all the vitriol over this movie... Uh, it actually did better than the fan movie did, uh, even though fans were d disappointed and upset and alienated by what the things that they did in the film. 
I was not as offended by this movie as others were. I don't like some of the choices they made. I thought Luke could have been a stronger character. And I think this movie really kind of sums up the challenges that Disney created for the writers and directors because they wanted something new, but they had to keep the old stuff here to attract the audiences. And as a result, the old characters who were superheroes in the first three films are kind of relegated off to the side and not doing all that much and uh, feeling sorry for themselves. Now, if I was in charge, and I'm sure they hear a lot about this from people like me, uh, but if I was in charge, I would have released these films in a different order than what they ended up doing. So I would have started with Rogue One versus The Force Awakens. And the reason is, is that if you want to get the fan base on board with your corporate takeover, Give them something that they'll love. And there's no question if Rogue One was the first film that Disney made, fans would have eaten it up probably more so than they did a year after The Force Awakens because it was set in a very familiar place. It was a true retro movie with new characters. It did, I think, an exceptional job of recreating that familiar environment of the original films. And it could have been able to help the sequel trilogy be very different. Remember, George Lucas wanted each of these trilogies to be its own thing. And I think the sequel trilogy ended up being more of a sequel to the original three than it was something that kind of stood on its own from a tone and a character standpoint. Uh, what they could have done here was said, hey, you know what, we're gonna do some new stuff, but we're gonna put these retro movies in between so you, everyone gets what they're looking for. Uh, and the result was they just totally botched everything. So what they could have done again is had Rogue One be Rogue One, the Force Awakens they could have created in a, in a time further away than when this story started. So as opposed to being 30 or 40 years since the Return of the Jedi, they could have maybe had it be centuries later or maybe a century later where all the mainline characters are dead and Force ghosts but around. Uh, and that would have certainly given the audience a little bit more satisfaction because, yeah, they're dead. They can't be around all the time. Uh, you could have built up these new characters in a way that I think would have been better and more new. Uh, and it would have, I think, probably been a more compelling sequel to the original trilogy. And I also think what they should have done with the sequel trilogy was have a single writer and director for all three. I thought it was a mistake from the get-go when they had this disjointed thing of, this one doing this film, and then Ryan Johnson doing the second one, and then they had the third guy that they fired doing the third one, and then they brought J.J. back. Uh, I don't know if the story was ever consistent between these films with three very different people uh, helming all of them, and it would have been better to have, I think, Ryan Johnson maybe doing a brand new story that was set further in the future with these new characters where you had a plan and an arc from the beginning to the end, and I don't think anyone from Disney has ever said that they did have that arc uh, even before they fired everybody. So I think the, the movie that we ended up getting this week uh, was probably very different than what they initially envisioned it to be. And who knows what it would have been, again, given the fact that there were so many different people working on it. Uh, if they had done the, the sequel trilogy like the other two trilogies had been done with a single creative boss, I think things could have been a little better. Uh, than where they ended up. Again, I'm not, I'm not hating it. I just think it, was, it could have been better than what they did. And then they could have peppered in these retro films in between. They could have brought Mark Hamill in for a Luke Skywalker movie or something to kind of fill in the gaps that they created with this 100-year you know, difference in story timeline or something. And I think it would have worked much better for the fans. It would have been good for the general audiences who would have had some familiar faces yet get a new story and all would have been great. But of course, Disney being Disney, they've got to keep making money. So they're going to keep making content and they can, I think, redeem themselves to some degree. Uh, so let's take a look at some predictions that I'm going to make. This one I think I'm going to be right about because it's already happening. Uh, we're going to see a lot of fan-friendly, lower-cost productions on Disney+. Plus. Uh, the Mandalorian is very successful. Uh, the last episode, I believe, is airing this Friday. I loved it. Uh, it's, it's like the perfect Return of the Jedi sequel because it's new characters. It's happening within the universe. So the things that occurred in that movie will be kind of coming into the storyline. It's just working great for me. I loved what they've done with every episode just about. There's a couple episodes that weren't great, but overall it is a a-plus production here, and I think we're going to see more of that. Uh, there's an Obi-Wan series coming out very shortly. And for Disney, this is great because the financial risk is really not there. So long as they can retain and attract new subscribers, uh, these things make a ton of sense to pour money into. And they're evergreen. They will continue, continually add value to the service. 
Um, so there's really no downside for Disney to produce this fan favorite Star Wars content. And given that they can be the exclusive home of that, uh, that certainly will drive more subscriptions. So we're going to be seeing a lot more of that. I also believe they will have a Ray, Finn, and Poe feature film uh, because they have developed a pretty significant fan base out there with general audiences. And uh, they have quite a mess to clean up now after the last film. So there'll be no doubt uh, something with the three of them, I think, as their own standalone sequel trilogy. Even though they say this saga's over, that saga with the Skywalkers might be, but those three are still young enough, I think, to deliver more money to the mouse. So I think we're going to be seeing more of that. And I hope if they do make a feature film trilogy with these three, that the same director is working on it with them, uh, because that was really the shortfall of the uh, uh, sequel trilogy we just got. And finally, I think we're going to get some kind of Luke Skywalker film with Mark Hamill. Uh, you know he'll do it. Uh, you know that the Star Wars management wants to win back these fans, and I think Luke's role in this sequel trilogy is probably the most controversial. Uh, so we're going to see something, I think, that'll take place in the 40 years between the Return of the Jedi film and the, uh, the sequel trilogy at some point. And I'm hoping that they do it soon before uh, Mark Hamill gets too tired or something, because he would be great in a film on his own, and it would be great to get that Luke Skywalker film we all wanted after Return of the Jedi ended. So those are my predictions. Let me know what you think uh, down below in the comments section, because this is going to be our Q&A for you. Uh, please try to avoid spoilers in your comments because not everyone has seen the movie yet. Uh, so we got another couple of days before we can really start openly talking about it. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the trilogy and whether or not you think that perhaps they should have done some things differently to really make a sequel trilogy more successful. Uh, let me know down in the comment stream.